JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for September the 29th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against the majority of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian morning Tuesday. It gained only versus the Japanese yen, while it was found virtually unchanged against the Canadian dollar. The greenback lost the most ground versus SEC, NOC, the pound and the Swiss franc. Now, the weakening of the US dollar and the Japanese yen suggests that financial markets traded in a risk-on fashion at the start of uh, the week. Indeed, looking at the performance in the equity world, we see that the major EU and US indices were a sea of green. That said, the upbeat morale softened somewhat during the Asian session today. Japan's Nikkei 225 and China Shanghai Composite uh, gained 0.15 and 0.56% respectively, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng slid 0.52%. Now, with uh, no clear catalyst behind Monday's rally in equities, we would consider this as the result of uh, portfolio rebalancing at the end of the month and the third quarter overall. Energy and financials, which suffered the most from the economic downturn due to the fast spreading of the coronavirus, enjoy, enjoyed the largest percentage gains among uh, the S&P's uh, major sectors, enhancing our view over month and quarter end uh, rebalancing. Comments by U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi that stimulus talks with Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin are set to continue may have also prompted investors to buy equities. Remember that last week headlines hit the wires that Democrats are working on a $2.2 trillion coronavirus aid bill that could be voted on this week, which suggests that the stalemate may end uh, sooner than previously thought. Having said all that though, with uh, COVID infections uh, still uh, rising at a fast pace, we are reluctant to call for a long-lasting recovery as the case of another uh, round of lockdown measures around the globe remains well on the table. The fact that we are just a month away from the US presidential election is another factor contributing to our cautious stance. Speaking about the election, today we have the first debate between uh, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. In general, Trump re-election may be positive for stocks as a Trump win would keep the 2017 corporate tax cuts in place, with the president perhaps pushing for more infrastructure spending. Biden may result in a retreat in equities as he has called for an increase in taxes on corporations and high-income individuals. He, also, he is also expected to increase regulations on certain sectors and industries, including banks, energy and healthcare. With all that in mind, the first debate may reveal if indeed this is investors thinking or not. In other words, we may get a first taste on how the markets may react on the election outcome. And back to the currencies, the pound was among the main G10 gainers, coming under strong buying interest after Bank of England Deputy Governor Dave Ramsden said that he and his colleagues are not about to use negative interest rates immediately. At their latest meeting, Bank of England policymakers noted that they are exploring how a negative bank rate could be implemented efficient, uh, effectively, something that increased speculation over the adoption of uh, sub-zero rates perhaps as soon as uh, the upcoming gathering. With that in mind, Ramsden's comments may have prompted some GBP uh, traders to scale back their negative rate bets and that's why the pound rallied. What may have also prompted traders to buy pounds may have been uh, some relatively encouraging headlines with regards to this week's round of uh, Brexit talks. 
According to reports, a UK spoke spokesperson said uh, yesterday that although there are, there are significant gaps between the EU's and the UK's positions, a final accord is still possible. This adds to the recent rhetoric that a breakthrough is possible with uh, one <coughs> Excuse me, with one EU official noting that uh, the deal is 90% there. Remember that the two sides agreed to find common ground before next month's EU summit at which any potential accord needs to be ratified. Thus, if we do see handshakes this week, the pound is likely to gain, while in case of no progress it could fall back below 127 against its US counterpart. Now, as for the rest of today's events, during the European session, we get Germany's preliminary CPIs for September. The CPI rate is forecast to have declined to minus 0.1% year over year from 0%, while the HICP1 is expected to have stayed unchanged at minus 0.1% year over year. This could raise speculation for Eurozone's headline inflation due out on Wednesday to have stayed in uh, negative waters as well. In the US, the conference uh, board consumer confidence index for September is coming out and the forecast points to an increase to 89.2 from 84.8. The American Petroleum Institute weekly report on crude oil inventories is also coming out, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. As for tonight, during the Asian Morning Wednesday, we get Japan's preliminary industrial production, New Zealand's ANZ Business Confidence Index, and China's official uh, PMI is all for the month of September. Japan's industrial production is forecast to have slowed to 1.5% month over month from 8.7%, while no forecast is available for New Zealand's ANZ Confidence Index. China's manufacturing PMI is anticipated to have risen fractionally to 51.2 from 51, but there is no estimate for the non-manufacturing index. We also have uh, four Fed speakers on today's agenda. Vice Chair uh, Richard Clarida, New York President John Williams, Philadelphia President Patrick Harker, and Board Governor uh, Randall Quarles. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about uh, the main events of the week uh, much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.